Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So are you new to CNC? Did you just get your CNC up and running and you are wondering to yourself, what should I make with my machine? Well, if that is the case, then this is the video for you. In this video, I am going to run through five project areas that you can make with your CNC that are very easy to program, easy to get done, and easy to learn the ropes of your new CNC machine. So, all right, sounds like a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and let's get on with the projects. The first project area I want to cover are things that are simple to make and easy to program with your CNC, and those are trays. Now I have a couple examples here of trays I've made in the past, and so this one here is just a simple heart with a pocket in the center. And so the second one here is something that's a little bit more complicated, but just as simple to program, and that is a Christmas tree with a series of pockets in the middle here. And so this Christmas tree specifically, I only used one one bit to create it. It was a quarter inch down cutting end mill, which I will link down below if you want to pick yourself up one. Uh, and all you had to do is create the profile around the outside and then program the pockets in the middle. And that is it. There is not a whole lot of magic here in terms of CNC programming. And so once you get your feeds and speeds dialed in, this one was super, super easy to make. Now the heart tray here, I actually used a bowl cutting bit for the pocket and then a quarter inch end mill for the profile around the outside. So the programming in that regard is a little bit more complicated by having two separate cuts with two different bits. Uh, but you do get this nice rounded profile around the inside, which is really nice for these trays. Now I do have a number of these trays actually I've made for myself. I use them as catch-alls around the house, uh, usually for keys and wallets and AirPods and things like this. Uh, but you can get super creative. Imagine uh, you know any outline for any holiday with a couple pockets in it or something as simple as square or round ones just to have laying around the house for example. And so they sell very well at craft fairs and they're super easy to make. A little bit of sanding and a little bit of finishing and you're off to the races. So this is my recommendation for the first project that I think a new user should tackle. So the second sort of projects that I recommend that new users kind of dig in on are very similar to trays. In fact, they're nearly identical in terms of the programming, but that is a bowl. Now this is something that it was a cutoff from a cutting board that I made. It is very tall, uh, but the programming is identical to the trays. And now you're asking yourself, what is really the difference between a tray and a bowl? Honestly, I don't have the faintest idea other than maybe the height of the walls. And so the only thing you need to concern yourself different from a tray for this particular bowl is the depth here, making sure that you have a bit that can cut as deep as you need to. So if you're using something like one of these trays, you can see there's a very significant difference in their thickness. And so the length of your cutting bit for a tray is maybe not as important as something like this. So for this specific bowl, I did use that bowl cutting bit here in the middle and then I used a quarter inch profile uh, bit around the outside and once again I will link those bits down below so you can take a look at them. But if you do have some more interesting woods like this like from this cutoff uh, then you can get some super creative sort of things with the bowls and you don't even need to have multiple wood species like this one you can just have a simple piece of wood that has a deeper cut so it could be just a deeper version of a tray. But this is something that uh, also is very useful. We use this for chips <laughs> when we have parties uh, you can actually create two separate uh, wells if you want to for example have chips on one side and salsa on the other for example or put ramekins or some sort of little bowls in here to protect the wood for other liquids and things like that super interesting super easy to do so I highly recommend that as maybe your second project So for your third project, I recommend digging into sign making, but rather than starting with wood, I recommend that you start with HDPE and very specifically the two color or three color HDPE. And so I have an example here of one of these signs that I made not so long ago. We actually have this in our kitchen. Uh, and so the advantage of this is, is you have this black surface, then a white core in the middle and then black on the back as well. And so you don't have to cut very deep to break through this black surface to create that white lettering. And so this is really cool. 
because you don't have to finish it. Once you're done cutting, it is just done. A little bit of cleanup to get the fuzzies off and you're good to go. And you can carve any series of words you want into the sign. And so you can get super creative as well. This one just happens to be square. I do have one with scallop sides and, and uh, ovals and whatnot and a variety of other things. I've created a, a lot of different signs out of this and because they're made out of this high density polyethylene, the HDPE, they will last forever. This is actually the stuff that they make playground gear out of uh, for elementary schools and high schools and things. It, it just it withstands the test of time. Sunlight, rain, heat, cold, doesn't really matter. It works really well. And so you can attach maybe magnets on the back and stick it to a metal door, for example, uh, or you can put little hooks in the top and you can hangle it, hang it down, or you could just use something like command strips or whatever. And so this is something that I think is really cool. Uh, I made a lot of these for friends who wanted specific signs as well so uh, it's a little more difficult to program just a little bit so uh, these pockets are now made out of letters you have to have letters into your program and then you create whatever profile you want uh, in some cases if you pre-cut your HDPE you don't even need to make a profile around the outside which is really cool because then you can just have something simple square like this uh, maybe cut it on a table saw or have it pre-cut by your uh, by your manufacturer for example I will leave links to this specific HDPE PE that I use here. I actually get it from Inventables. They have a wide variety of colors and I highly recommend getting it from there. Uh, they come in 12 by 12 squares. So if you want to make a sign that is 12 inches by 12 inches, you don't have to do anything to it. You just carve in your letters or some sort of design as well. Uh, you don't have to just stick to letters. You can do images and graphics and things like this. I do recommend using straight cutters on this one, not the V cutters. Uh, it just turns out a little bit better. Um, but if you want to V cut this, you certainly can do that as well. The next project I recommend tackling for CNC users is a riff from the previous project, and that is a sign made out of wood instead of HDPE. Now, most people do start with wood with their CNC rather than something like that high density plastic, but I have found wood to be just a little bit more finicky to make the signs with rather than something like the HTPE. And so I will show you this one of the signs I made many, many, many moons ago with my original shape Oko, which is only uh, 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. Uh, but this sign actually turned out really well. It turns out that this maple is a flame maple. And so uh, you can sort of see it shimmering a little bit as you turn it and twist it. Um, I did not plane it down at all. It is an entire one inch thick. So I would recommend if you do use wood for signs you make it just a little bit thinner it's just a little bit easier to work with um, but I did have a little bit of problem on this sign because the wood was not completely flat on the top and so the letters on this side were engraved just a little less deeply than the letters on this side uh, and so as you can see they look a little bit more bold than these letters over here because they're just a little bit deeper and that is why I recommend starting with the HDPE it is very uniform in thickness so you get better results and you you don't have to finish it. So in this case, all I did is I used a V cutter to cut the letters. I painted the top, let it dry, and then I just sanded the uh, paint away and it left the paint in the inset here. Now, if you're going to do this technique, I do recommend that you seal the wood first uh, so that when you do put the paint on, the paint doesn't uh, get into the grain of the top. It just sticks into, this, uh, into the letters. And so if you don't seal it, you can get a lot of bleeding. It doesn't necessarily look very very good. So I uh, just recommend sealing it with some sanding sealer. I will leave the link to the one that I use down below. Um, and then a little bit of finish. In this case, I just uh, spray can poly on it um, or a little lacquer, whatever you want. You can also do oldies oil or some sort of hardwood waxes if you want to do that as well. But this is super neat and super easy to do. So if you want to up your game with the wood sign just a little bit, rather than using paint, you can switch over to epoxy to fill your signs. And so this is one that I made also not so long ago, but you can see it is just a little bit more complicated. Uh, the programming was not as nearly straightforward as a simple V-carve of the letters here. 
but with the epoxy, you can get super creative with the colors uh, and the orientation and a variety of other things. So in this case, I found this little image of a pug, which happens to be Jack's favorite dog. Put it off to the side here in uh, you know Jack's room, and we just have it on his door. And so again, this is a little bit of uh, flame maple here. Uh, it's not quite as nice as that one there, but I did plane it down just a little bit. So this is about three quarters of an inch thick. I think going a little bit thinner uh, maybe a half inch or so or five eighths would be better uh, just makes it a little bit less heavy to stick on the door but we just use some again some of these velcro command strips in the back to stick on the door and so very cool highly recommend that uh, these are very popular because you can highly customize them as well so uh, it, we want to up your game just a little bit from the basic sign try a little bit of epoxy The last area of projects that I want to cover is a combination of different things, and some of them are easier to make than others, uh, but they are also very useful and utilitarian, and we have a bunch of these things around the house. And so the first thing I just want to throw out there is this little wine caddy here, and so what it does is you stick this on top of the wine, and then you can stick your two glasses on the side, uh, and it allows you to kind of carry your wine around with the glasses on the side here. It's mostly for show, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's a little tipsy-turvy there, tipsy-topsy, topsy-turvy, however you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, so the, sometimes the wine glasses might want to fall off a little bit. Uh, but this is super easy to program from a CNC perspective. And so it is just a, a profile cut out here and a profile around the outside. I did uh, round it over on my router table to make it a little bit smooth, but you can just leave it square and break the edges a little bit to make it a little bit more smooth. Uh, and in this case, there's actually two different types of wood. Uh, there's a cherry and a maple. It was a little bit of experiment of mine of uh, laminating these two pieces together, but it looks really cool and you can choose, uh, you know, what sort of color you want to go up. Uh, this is super easy to do and I think uh, these are very popular as well. There are plans out there. You can download them from the internet if you don't want to make your own or I will link, leave links down below. Uh, the last thing that I want to cover here is uh, very similar to some of the other things we've covered. It is a little bit more complicated, uh, but it can be very dramatic in the end and that is a cutting board like this. This is a relatively simple profile, but then putting an inlay in your cutting board here. Now this one is a pair that I did a long, long time ago. I believe I did it in easel uh, and I actually have the project and it might be shared. Uh, I will leave a link to it down below if you want to create something like this. And so again, very simple. So I just had a simple piece of maple right here with the Badalk inlay. There's just one inlay, so it's a simple pocket, right? Uh, uh, for the inlay and then the profile for the inlaid wood as well and then the profile for the outsides here and a little bit of sanding I didn't round anything over I just broke the edges again I made this on my original shape Oko way back in the day and so super easy to do and it looks so cool I actually made a couple of these we've sold a couple of them I had uh, this pair here we had an apple and I think I had some grapes and some other things and so uh, just think of the art of the possible here and you can get super creative of with the inlays. I've done multiple different wood species in the inlays to create different colors and whatnot in here. Uh, think of this, in this case, you can make the body of the pair one wood, the stem a different kind of wood, and then the, maybe the leaf a different kind as well. And you can actually get woods that are dyed specific colors, right? So then you can do this using uh, uh, maybe a green leaf and a brown stem and uh, you know a green sort of pair or something like that. Uh, alternatively, you could do this as well with epoxy if you want. Now, I don't necessarily recommend using epoxy for cutting boards uh, where there's gonna be a, a food on the surface. There's a debate raging on the internet whether or not epoxy is food safe or not. Once it's fully cured, I can't imagine it being too much of a problem. But the real issue that a reason I rec don't recommend epoxy for cutting boards is if you're gonna be cutting on it, you are gonna mar that epoxy very easily. It is not very knife friendly. <laughs> uh, so it's just gonna mar it up and there's really not a whole lot of uh, options for fixing it once it gets chewed up. Whereas a cutting board here, you can just kind of sand it smooth again. Now, I don't cut on this specific board. This is for serving more than anything, uh, but uh, you can get super creative. Uh, there's a lot of the charcuterie boards out there now that have big swooping sort of handles and 
they're very long and whatnot so you can make this as short as long as you want uh, so that's just another option as well and one final sort of bonus thing that I just want to mention is something I've done a long long time ago as well uh, this is a, a combination of the sign and the sort of uh, uh, profile cuts and that's just an epoxy coaster now this happens to be the gorilla from the local swim team here so um, this is uh, made it a bunch of these coasters here put a little bit of um, cork on the back to keep them from floating around or sliding around uh, but just imagine this is a mini version of one of those epoxy signs and so again these are all very easy to do relatively speaking this one was done uh, actually with just one bit it was done within a 16th inch flat end mill for this one here uh, I didn't actually uh, the profile was created with the table saw and the, and the chop saw uh, and then I just chamfered the edges a little bit with the uh, router table as well so there are lots of options out there and a lot of these are just super easy to do I will post links to some of the projects I've done on easel because I can easily share those and if you have any suggestions on other beginner projects that are approachable please leave them in the comments below uh, and so that we can just uh, start a dialogue start a conversation about how to help new users and new CNC people out uh, to get off the ground and make really cool things well, that was the video. I hoped you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make, and I hope you learned something from it. So if you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video for some reason, well, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up anyway, but tell me why in the comments down below so I can make future videos better. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired. The first project area that I want to cover is something that is super easy to make and very to pro <clears throat> very to program. <laughs> the first project area I want to cover is something that is super easy to make and very easy to program for your CNC, and that are trays. Those are trays, not that are trays. God damn it. The next project I recommend tackling is a riff from the previous project, and that is signed made out of wood, that are signs made out of wood. <laughs>